You may be you may be shifting industries. You may be getting into photography because you see how many photographers there are or content creators there are. And you're wondering, in 2024, can I start a successful photo business? So in my two-part video, I am going to go into starting a photography business. And then the second part is starting a video business. And this covers commercials. This covers weddings and everything in between. And how you can start today, what you need that really matters to start a successful business in the photo or and video world. And just before we start into this, I'm not sponsored by anyone because we're a petite channel. But these chocolates my buddy brought me from uh, from England, I believe he got these from. If this company would like to sponsor me, I am all in 100%. That I will give into right away. So if you're that company, reach out to me for sponsoring these videos. Thank you. So the photo industry is different than it was five years ago. And what I mean by that is the way you market, the way you present your work, the way you show is, I guess, somewhat similar. You go on Instagram, you have a website, but there are things that matter now more so than before and things that mattered uh, didn't even exist years ago that matter today. So let me make a list for you and we'll go through it. So the first thing is attitude. So if you're looking at my own videos, let's say you've seen some of my previous videos, there are people that get triggered by the smallest things because I use the word, let's say most, or I say a professional or things like that. And you can see someone writes me like two or three paragraphs that I often can't read two or three paragraphs and they're upset because of the wording or they feel singled out or they feel like it doesn't apply to them. Things apply to more than just you, my friend. So take in consideration what I say uh, may be a generality. It may not apply to you, but may apply to the general consensus of people who are watching this because I do coach one-on-one -on -one and I do have small workshops and I listen to people who message me every day asking about cameras, asking about um, how much you can make realistically, what's the most lucrative area for us, at least in SoCal, maybe different than what you're shooting in China or in Australia or in France. So keep this all in consideration. What I'm talking about is from someone who has been doing this since 2009 in SoCal, in San Diego, and now in Orange County. And we've traveled to various cities. We've been to New York. We've been to Missouri. We've been to Tennessee, all because of our work. Our work, thankfully, got us there. And I don't believe, if you're going into this, to think about... I have to be the absolute best, for example, pet photographer or best wedding photographer. That's not the key to success. The key to success, in my opinion, is being in the top 10th percentile or being the top 10% of various things, meaning you're the fastest to respond via email or you're the fastest to edit or you're the best editor or by best, I mean the top 10 or you are the, the greatest at uh, creating black and white photos. If you can get in multiple top tens, that's how you're a successful person. Not saying I'm the best wedding photographer, because what does that even mean? Do you shoot the best poses? Are you the best poser? Are you the best uh, gay wedding photographer? Are you the best Persian wedding photographer? What, what exactly are you saying when you say best? So think about in getting in multiple areas. So the number one thing is to change your attitude Focus on not being sensitive, focus on getting in various areas and being the best in those areas, whatever you choose to be. So if you're going into wedding photography, think about being the best moody photographer in your area, being the best Persian photographer. What does that mean? That means maybe taking into account family members or the party, the dance floor. Think about it like that. Number two, gear does matter, but the amount of gear doesn't matter. What do I mean by that? It means that you don't need an 85 1.2, 50 1.2, 35 1.2, the 70 to 200, the 200 to 800. You don't need all that for most things that you're doing. And if you're like a sports photographer, you need your two zooms. You need the 200 to 800 or the 200 to 400 because you're shooting sports. But if you're getting into weddings, for example, you just need a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200 and then a backup that can be used as an alternative, like a 16 uh, millimeter 2.8, if you're talking about Canon RF glass, or a 35 millimeter 1.8. These are all relatively cheap uh, prime lenses that you can always use as a backup in case your 24 to 70 breaks. But I've gone through phases where I started out as a 24 to 70, then I went to just shooting 50 and 135, and then 85 and 35. And there are so many restrictions when it comes to that, where you lose moments because you're either too zoomed in or too far, even if you're shooting on two, two camera bodies, that I feel for me to capture the most amount of story, the most shots, the most shots that matter to the couple, not just for my portfolio, 
is to shoot with a 2470 now and a 70 to 200. And I have two professional grade bodies, meaning I have a Canon R5 and a Canon R6 Mark II, but you can get away with being an R6 Mark II and an R6, for example. You don't have to have an R5. You don't have to have an R3 or the R1 by the time you're reading this. It is important to have two cameras that can have dual SD cards so you can shoot backup. You have two bodies in case one breaks, you can use the other one as your backup. And so that you don't need to constantly keep checking, keep switching lenses. You're at the 2470, the other one's a 7200, you're covered, you're straight. You can shoot pretty much everything. That's what I would recommend. And if you're shooting commercials, for example, you want something that is sharp like a 2470 or maybe your backup is your 7200 or your backup is your 85. Depends what you're shooting, right? But you don't need a whole list of five lenses, six lenses, seven lenses. You can get away with two or three. I have three lenses now. I technically have some more manual lenses, but predominantly I just stick with those. And for video, we'll get into the video in part two, but for video, just know that I predominantly shoot on a Blackmagic 6K and I only have two lenses for that. I'll get into the lenses in the next video, but basically just two lenses. And I have backup lenses, but those are the only two that I use. Relationships matter. You can't you can't succeed in this day and age being solo. Um, I know you're gonna, someone's gonna write me, oh, but this person's a solo person and they succeed. That's not necessarily true. That's just what you see. That's the perception that they're giving you. So let's get into weddings, for example. If a planner wants to get coffee with you, be thrilled that they're inviting you for coffee or lunch and make sure you're the one paying for it. Make sure you dress up in clean clothes. Make sure you're professional. Make sure you're kind. Make sure you're not throwing F-bombs out there. If on the other hand, a um, marketing director wants to meet with you, meet with him or her. Establish those relationships because when you're a kind person and you're responsible and you show up on time, even if it's just for coffee, they are more likely going to consider you than someone else. They are going to be like this person in everyday life is a kind person, is a person that shows up on not, on time, is a clean person, knows how to talk to people, isn't weird, isn't on their cell phone the whole time. And I would actually prefer to work with this person versus the more established uh, photographer who has 30 years of work under the belt, because I don't know if I'm going to vibe with this person for the whole day. Wedding planners feel the same way. Marketing directors feel the same way. If you don't believe me, test it out. I can't. I can't convince you otherwise other than say test it out because relationships absolutely matter more now than ever before. Websites matter, but not as much as before. Insurance matters, obviously. So you pick a company for your insurance and you, you book it. So when someone says, do you have insurance? You show them your insurance, insurance certificate. Websites, if someone says, do you have a website? You show them your website. That's it. You have a few pictures on there that showcase what you want to shoot. So again, if you're shooting pets, you have pet photos cats, dogs, lizards, that stuff on there. You don't have brides on there. You don't have commercial stuff on there. If you're a commercial photographer, you have uh, commercial things on there like, uh, you know, you can have a hotel, you can have watches, shoes, whatever it is that you want to shoot. You have that all on there on the front page, simple and a contact form. That's it. That's what a website is for. Just to show someone that you're legit, just like insurance. It's just to show this guy's legit, this gal's legit and that you can trust them because at the very basic, they have a website. The website doesn't need to be, uh, you, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars and hours into it to develop it for SEO. You don't need to do that stuff in 2024. Your website can be made on cards, C-A-R-R-D, for like 80 bucks in under 30 minutes, or use Squarespace or Wix or whatever else is, is sponsored these days by everyone on um, YouTube. You just don't have to put in the effort, in my opinion. Basic, simple stuff, what you want to showcase, contact form, that's it. You have no clients. How do you get clients in 2024? This might be the most important part. Display what you want to shoot. Like we just said, commercial stuff. You have the watch, the shoes, the car, whatever you want to shoot. On your Instagram, on your portfolio website, make YouTube videos about it. Put it on your Facebook, put it on your TikTok, film behind the scenes. You don't have any clients, I understand. Use whatever you want to shoot and create a spec ad. So if, when I didn't have any brides or grooms, I would call someone like, who wants to pretend to be a bride and groom? I'll take your photos, I'll deliver your photos to you, and people would volunteer, and I'd shoot the person, the type of couple that I wanna shoot most of. Or if you're shooting commercial stuff, you can do spec ads for cars, but that is very difficult and probably gonna cost you a lot of money. So do something on a smaller scale, light a watch, light a beer bottle, create amazing creative images like that, create the basic stuff and the creative stuff so that you have both of them to show in your portfolio. When a client contacts you, you're gonna be able to kind of get their range of their budget. How do I know that? Because if someone says, hey, 
we're looking to shoot this product and we want six images and we want the commercial release for them, I know that that's a budget that's like 20K or higher. If someone contacts me and says, hey, I have shoes, I need, I don't know, 100 photos of them. Can you just deliver me the photos? I know that they don't really know what they're doing and they probably are looking to spend about a thousand bucks, maybe $1,500 at the most. So you decide if you want to take that and then you decide how much under the market you want to come into because you have no real work. You just have your spec stuff. So you want the work to show that you have an actual paying client so that you can get the testimonial from them afterwards to say like, hey, this person actually delivered. They did a great job um, and I would recommend them. So if they're, if you know their budget's a thousand bucks, maybe you can come in and say, you know, I can do this at $800. And if they ask how much of this have you done before, you can be honest. I've only done spec ads, but that's why I'm giving you a discounted rate. Or if they're coming in at 20K and they, they really like your creativity, that's when you can say like, hey, this is 20K. I'm willing to do it for 15K or 10K and double the commercial releases I'm giving you. You don't give them everything because then they're not going to respect and value, but you're giving them a little bit more and charging a little bit less to get their business. And then if they come back to you, which hopefully they will, that is when you charge them the full amount. You get your client, you get the pictures from it, you post it on Instagram, you have behind the scenes video. If you need to hire someone, ask your friend, your buddy to come out, have them shoot behind the scenes so you can post down on Instagram reels, on YouTube shorts, on TikTok. And then you wanna make a video like this, like how I'm doing on your process on how you shot it. Like, hey, I shot this beer bottle this way. These shoes I lit with natural light. I used my camera, my R6 and this, or my Sony this, and I did this with it. And this was difficult. This was easy. This is how I edited. All that stuff can go into YouTube videos. You can make unlimited spec ads and you can go over your behind the scenes to create more videos for your YouTube as well. So people can that way uh, discover you, whether through SEO, if someone's searching it on Google, or if someone is basically just browsing and they come across and you're like, hey, that's what we're looking for. Whatever you're posting, whether it's on LinkedIn or Instagram, you still want to be professional. You still don't want it to be vulgar. You still want to be on brand. You still want to be a likable character. Um, you don't have to fake it. I'm not really faking it right now, but in real life, I may talk a little bit more, uh, how should I say, sharply than I do in the videos right now, because in general, YouTube has a very sensitive audience. At least they're going to comment, be like, oh my God, you offended me doing this. You offended me saying this. Your hairstyle offended me and so on and so on. Just read the comments. So that's why you got to be a little bit more uh, reserved, at least for YouTube, in my opinion. But if you can show what you're shooting is something that you love, is something that you're enthusiastic about, then people are going to resonate with that and people are going to be paying you money to have you shoot something similar for them. If you shoot a party and it looks like it's a fun party and there's behind the scenes footage of you dancing, of you uh, throwing your camera up and getting some unique angles, people are going to be like, I'd love to have that person at my party, not only because it looks like their work is really good, but because they are someone that I like and it's someone that my um, audience would like and someone that my guests would like and I'd get along with them and they wouldn't be a doozer. They wouldn't be um, kind of a hassle to me on my party. Same thing if you're shooting with commercials, same thing for pretty much everything you can think about. You want to display how you're going to act so people know what they're getting before they hire you. And those are the steps I would recommend if you're getting started today in 2024 in photography. The next video is going to be about video. It's a little different. It's not exactly the same. Check that video out. Write your comments on the bottom. If you agree, don't agree, you were offended, show me what minute you were offended. And if you're respectful, I'll probably respond to you. If you're not, then your comment will be hidden forever. Apologies in advance. Just kidding. I'm not apologizing for that.